guys, it's Jessie. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video and welcome back to the start of my new series of blindly picking my TBR for 2024. So I have a bunch of books wrapped up. This is only half of them. I've got another half here. The reason they're all in different wrapping paper is just because I reused wrapping that I was like given with gifts for Christmas and stuff. So all the stuff my gifts were wrapped in, I saved so that I wouldn't be wasting anything. And yeah, we have 20 books here that um, throughout the year, about once per month, I'm gonna be unwrapping one or two and I'm gonna be reading them blindly for um, a vlog. And this year we are doing it a little bit differently. Um, last year I just wrapped up some random books. This year I have decided to wrap up my my 10 highest rated and 10 lowest rated according to Goodreads um, books on my physical TBR um, bar one or two um, because last year I remember I had an issue with I think live ceremony was slightly bigger so I knew what it was these are all like the same size just like different lengths in terms of like pages rather than in terms of like actual size of the book so I really really don't know which is which they are all numbered slightly um, I don't know if we can see a number this one may not maybe isn't numbered they all have little numbers on them i don't know how well you can see this one does have a three on it can you see it's up there no anyway um they are all numbered individually i mix them all up in terms of like highest rated and lowest rated and where they fell but what we're going to be doing is picking one by random number generator and then one just off of me picking it so uh, first i will show you which books we have wrapped up this is going to hurt by adam k rated 4.41 where the crawdad sing by delia owens rated 4.39 legend born by tracy dion rated 4.37 powerless by lauren roberts rated 4.35 one dark window by rachel gillig rated 4.33 love and other words by christina Lauren rated 4.29. Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mitsuki Sujimura rated 4.28. Eleanor Oilephant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman, rated 4.24. The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, rated 4.23. The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay, rated 3.12. Fish Swimming in Dappled Sunlight by Riku Onda, rated 3.13. Murder in a Heat Wave by a Mixture of Authors, rated 3.18. A Spoonful of Murder by J.M. Hall, rated 3.18. This Lie Will Kill You by Chelsea Pitcher, rated 3.2. The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, rated 3.32. How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao, rated 3.35. Murder Before Evensong by Reverend Richard Coles, rated 3.35. The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz, rated 3.44. And Femlandia by Christina Doucher, rated 3.49. And if you are very astute, you will notice there were 19 there. That is because I had to cut out one of the um, highest rated ones because I recently got Song of Achilles, which is actually in the top 10 of my highest rated books. So I wrapped that one up instead of, I think it was Billy Summers that I cut out. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just get straight into it. I'm super excited excited like looking at all of these books i'm like oh i just really don't know what to pick so um let's firstly get a randomly generated one i'm like a little bit nervous i don't know why okay so i have a random number generator here where i'm going to pick my first book so i'm just going to spin it it's really interesting because i don't know whether it's going to be highest or lowest rated some of the higher rated ones i want to read more than the lower rated ones and vice versa so we've got number nine okay um let's see where is number nine this is number 10 i believe um 12 god i wrote some of these numbers so small i literally can't find it that is 11 4 7 6 goodness me i literally can't find any numbers five nine okay this one's nine so this one feels a little bit shorter which is good like not too long um i don't know if you can see it says nine up here but it's really difficult to read so um i honestly have no idea what this could be let's unwrap it now i'll let you guys see it first is that in shot yeah okay this that's the right way around okay i have no idea what this could be oh okay this is interesting so this is a spoonful of murder by jm hall this is technically on the lowest rated side of things um but it's actually one that i'm quite excited for and one i potentially would prefer to read than other higher rated ones um this is a cozy mystery um i believe it follows a group of retirement friends kind of like very much similar to thursday murder club it's like retired old people and i believe they are trying to solve the murder of their ex-colleague so yeah this will be very interesting so yeah this is our first book so that's the one we've randomly picked and then let's do one that i pick physically so i mean i don't want anything too long like this immediately is gonna be a no 15 is kind of short so are these ones a lot of these aren't all too long i also don't know whether i'm gonna end up picking up a higher rated or a lower rated one okay so i've picked up 
up all of our more reasonably short-ish ones um, because some of the ones I've got here are just like absolute chonkers of a book. I've got a lot of reading to do in January and um, I've got a lot of plans in the first kind of week so that's why I'm thinking of a shorter one but it doesn't necessarily need to be tiny. Um, hmm, what do I go for? This is really difficult. I might grab this one here and we will see what I think, maybe, who knows? I have no idea what it could be. Oh my god, I'm like second guessing all my decisions. I'm leaning towards one of these three, or oh, also this one. Okay, one of these three. Yeah, let's go for this one. Let's go for this like really cute little mouse wrapping paper. So, this is our second book of the video. What will it be? Okay, if that is the front, you guys will see it there. What is that? Oh, interesting. This is a good one. I'm so excited for this. I actually got this recently for my birthday from my boyfriend. Um, this is technically in the lower half. This is like one of, if not the lowest rated book on my TBR, but it's one I'm actually really excited for and arguably like more excited than some of the higher rated ones like Legendborn and stuff. This is again a little bit short, so it should be an easy read. Um, this basically, I believe it's a vampire story. Um, it's a horror novel, but what I like about it is it's kind of like, I believe it's a uh, memoir um, or like an autobiography um, or a biography about a person who might be a vampire um, and the person who it's about has like gone through it and like written kind of like corrections in and stuff like that like in handwriting so oh my god this is so exciting so we've got two of the lowest rated ones for our first video which is definitely interesting although arguably this is one that was kind of like my most excited for so yeah i'm really interested to see whether i enjoy them this one i feel like might just be that it's like a little bit of a boring classic murder mystery and this one i feel like is just a little bit like different and weird um so i'm interested to see what i think of them and yeah an interesting way to kick off the series for some reason i always just thought i was gonna get one of each um but yeah, I'm excited about this. Uh, this will be a fair fun time. Okay, so I am just under halfway through A Spoonful of Murder. I'm on page 127, which is like this much through. Um, I decided to start with this one. I feel like with this, it's probably more likely that I'm going to agree with the rating. I feel like it's like got a lower rating. Maybe it's a little bit boring, just like a casual, cosy mystery type of thing. Whereas Paul Bearer's Club, I think it's probably like either love it or hate it. So I thought it would be fun to start with this one first. Um, I'm really enjoying it actually. I'm listening to it via audiobook because it is on Everand. I like it. I'm not super engaged with the mystery and I'm not like religiously following along like eager to find out who is the culprit um, but overall I'm enjoying it. I also am really liking the audiobook narrator. I feel like to me, it's gonna sound so weird, it's the vibe of like your like friend's mum. Like when you're a kid and you've like gone over for tea and she's like talking to you like it feels very friendly, very like warm, stuff like that. Um, but yeah overall at the moment we are following three women uh it's liz pat and thelma um they all are kind of blending into one i'm not getting like key differences between them besides liz i believe wants to lose weight and she talked about that a lot and that's about it with the differences between them um so i think that's partly due to audiobook because i'm not quite listening into whose perspective i'm in like whose perspective i'm following like i don't necessarily catch it every time um and i do find myself thinking oh i'm not actually sure who we're following here so i do think the characterization could have been a little bit better but we're basically following them and their ex-primary school teachers and another woman they worked with they saw recently she's like starting to get dementia um in like the early stages and then a few weeks later she's been found dead because she's like mixed up her pills but they're a bit suspicious they think like there's some suspicious circumstances surrounding everything and maybe um it may not have been an accident so they are trying to investigate it and yeah this is my favorite cozy mystery that i've read so far um aside from the thursday murder club um i haven't read too many but i've read like death and croissants and i do like this more than that um so overall yeah i'm just having a good time i'm enjoying the audiobook and yeah no complaints really i'm very much having a fun time hey guys it is actually um later in the same day and i ended up actually finishing um spoonful of murder today i had lots of bits to do um so i ended up just finishing off um all via audiobook i'm pretty sure i listened to 99 percent of this via audiobook and i really really enjoyed it i think what i've noticed for me with audiobooks and cozy mysteries i feel like if i listen to the audiobook i enjoy the overall story more but if i read it i'm like actually invested in the mystery if that makes sense so i still did really like all the characters they definitely felt a little bit more separate towards the end but still like very similar i feel like pat 
and Thelma I could very much like interchange they were not too different from each other if that makes sense um but overall I really really enjoyed it I don't think I was like super invested in the mystery as I said because I listened to it via audiobook but like I feel like for me I just have to kind of weigh that up now whether I'd rather like enjoy the book as a whole more or like be specifically invested in the mystery and the characters and stuff like that because when they would bring up certain suspects and once certain things started to get revealed I was like oh wait who is that again like I can't remember who that was um but overall I did enjoy it and I decided to give it a four stars um I really enjoyed the characters in here and I know I said that they were kind of um interchangeable a little bit but I still enjoyed them I like the characterizations um this is still my favorite um cozy mystery type of thing besides the Thursday murder club that I've read and I do think it was most like it in tone from what I've read of other bits um and yeah overall have positive feelings towards it I decided to give it a four stars and yeah I'm definitely going to be continuing on with the series I do think maybe the low rating is due to maybe like the lack of like strong strong characterization um but overall I don't think it deserves to be like one of the if not the lowest rated books on my TBR um so yeah I'm very happy I read it and um, it was just a fully enjoyable time so um no issues with the writing anything like that and yeah I really liked it one thing I don't want to be super super picky um but JM Hall I thought that was a woman but then it had the like acknowledgements read by the author and it was most definitely a man um one thing is that like the women in here Liz was very bothered about her weight and Thelma for a while was like bothered about the fact that she didn't have children and I don't want to be super super picky but like I don't know whether it comes across a little bit poorly of like a man using a little bit of a um unisex pseudonym writing about like middle-aged women as if like they would only care about those things in their personal life um like I don't know it just felt a little bit stereotypical and like if it was a woman writing it I don't know whether I'd have as big of a problem but like I think it's the ambiguous name and then also like the the main things impacting two of the women were like very stereotypical and it's like firstly women can be fine without children like the one that was bothered about it was the only one without children I believe and like that's not obviously plenty of women do really want children and can't have them but like for that to be like the main part of her personality I guess and then with Liz like when we're in her head for most of the book she was like very worried about her weight and things like that so yeah it just felt a little bit stereotypical of like middle-aged to slightly older women but like I don't want to be like super super picky um and I still enjoyed the book again like I will pick up the rest of the series and I would like to see because I believe there's three out how the kind of characterization goes like whether we kind of learn more about the characters and they kind of individualize a little bit more but yeah overall positive feelings towards it and yeah I will um catch up with you when I'm reading Paul Bearer's Club, which I am still really excited about and I think I could love, potentially, we'll see. Hello, long time no talk. We are back at uni. I have finished the Paul Bearer's Club. I sound like I'm dying. Lots to catch up on here. So, <laughs> obviously, last time I saw you, I think I was just about to go back to uni um, and I had plans to read this like in the first few days back and then I just had like a bunch of nine to five days and then I had two 2.5k word projects essays to hand in in my first week and then on the Thursday of my first week I got sick and now we are here on Tuesday my uploads have genuinely been all over the place I feel like I got to one video last week like I'm so behind I'm all over the place like I haven't been reading and then I've been reading but I've not been reading for this video I've been reading for like a video that will come out in like a week like I it's all chaos in here and like I've got a cold obviously you can tell and this is like the best I've sounded in like days so I'm here to pretty much just chat to you about the Paul Bearers Club I have just been reading this and or listening to the audiobook hence why I've still got a bookmark in there but I was listening to the audiobook whilst I sat in my bed and played Homescapes and I had a really good time with it overall I really enjoyed this the rating I'm gonna settle on is a 3.75 very much rounded up to a 4 I definitely think it felt a little bit slow towards the middle part where I picked up the audiobook that definitely helped I do think it started to drag so let's start from the beginning so this is following Art who's like a little awkward boy in high school as he's interacting with his friend Mercy these are all pseudonyms I think there's a big speech about names at the start I didn't quite get and then um, he's writing this memoir and then Mercy is jumping in and like correcting things and then giving her perspective at the end of the chapters and it pretty much spans like a really long length of time like pretty much from high school to their like whole adult life they're in and out of each other's lives and basically it doesn't say anything on the blurb but this has definitely been pitched as a vampire story definitely not a vampire in the conventional sense and I definitely think this isn't necessarily like a horror novel in the conventional sense I definitely think the reason for this 
being so lowly rated this is the lowest rated one on my tbr the reason for that is i think because of its like a bit of ambiguous nature like i was thinking about comparing my rating to a spoonful of murder obviously i think this one is like a million times more unique i've never read a book like this i'm not sure i will read a book like this again um but overall, like my enjoyment level was a little bit lower than a spoonful of murder but overall i did enjoy it as i said i picked up the audiobook because it was on spotify i really like the narrator of it he's narrated something else i've read i can't tell what it was but i really like him as a narrator and i always like to have audiobooks when people are jumping in like if there's footnotes anything like that i feel like it can really help overall it was really interesting to read i think at the start i was definitely a little bit more intrigued and then yeah the pacing for the pacing didn't really fall off it just didn't really pick up at all um throughout the whole book i don't really know if i would actually classify this as horror maybe i would classify it as speculative fiction I'm not sure like it's very slow we have a couple of like horror scenes but they were kind of my least favorite parts because I personally didn't find them scary um, and there's like a slight little bit of a unreliable narrator in that like Mercy and Art are disagreeing on things obviously you're just getting Art saying it and then Mercy disagreeing he's not like writing back yeah you're getting a little bit of a unreliable narrator from one or two of them maybe both who knows um, and overall I just enjoy it the ending I was definitely very intrigued by um, they hinted at a couple of things throughout which made me think it was going to be a little bit more of a like bang crazy ending um, and it wasn't it kind of very much followed the trajectory of the book um, and yeah it was like a slow creepy ish coming of age ish story type of thing really i think kayla who loves this um from books and lala she actually described it as you're in a cinema watching an indie movie about like two friends going through life and then you can hear from the cinema next door um that there's like a vampire action flick and um like you could just like get the little drops in it i don't know if i'd quite describe it like that but that kind of does sum it up i feel like i'm not giving my best analysis because i'm ill i do think some of the things in here went over my head mercy kind of jumping in with the additional writing bits at the end of the chapter kind of does help to clarify what's happened because she'll mention something i was like oh that's what that meant okay cool that makes more sense um because some of the writing in here is very very pretty very very like um extended um and i feel like sometimes the metaphors and stuff like went completely over my head and i was like i don't know what you're talking about and i just kind of along for the vibes um so yeah certain parts of this i feel like maybe i didn't enjoy as much because i felt a bit dumb like um some parts of the writing i just felt like i didn't really get um but overall i still think it was good i think it was well written i'd definitely be interested to pick up from paul tremblay again this is by no means deserving to be the lowest book on my tbr um i just think maybe like an expectation mismatch with this like the slowness of it i don't normally like slow books like it wasn't slow slow but like for a horror book it felt a bit slow and it wasn't very horror-y i would say i wouldn't necessarily classify it as horror so yeah overall i really did enjoy it and yeah 3.75 is the rating that i'm going to be solidifying for that one so yeah overall in this video we did read two very good books um these were both lowly rated um like some of the lowest rated on my tbr they both came from that section and overall i don't think these two are justified in being so lowly rated um, um, this one I could even see like being really highly rated and me kind of not getting it because it's like quite well written and stuff so yeah miss marketing for this one and then the other one I don't know like I really did enjoy it I guess maybe like the characters weren't super fleshed out and it was a little bit generic but like I had a fun time with both of them so um yeah I'm really really happy that um we are starting this series off again you'll see another video of this nature next month and yeah thank you for sticking with me as I have been all over the place the last few weeks um and not back to my uploading schedule but we are back now sundays wednesdays you know from this weekend we'll be back reading vlogs etc etc i've got so many big plans and i can't wait to get back to reading so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye